anything to do with generative AI and large language models automatically draws our attention. In this video, I am going to give you a walkthrough of something known as Vertex AI Generative AI Studio. Let's see that. Here are the topics for the video. We are going to see what is Vertex AI Gen AI Studio. Okay. Then we are going to see what are foundation models in Google Cloud. Very important to understand. We are going to understand what is Gen AI Studio and what is something known as model gardens in Google Cloud. Okay. Then we are going to see how to design prompts in Generative AI Studio in Google Cloud. I'm going to show you the demo. After that, I'm going to show you the code example in Google Colab for the same thing. Then I'm going to show you some more features of Generative AI Studio in Google Cloud. And then we are going to see the way forward from here. Okay. So this video may be a little longer guys, but please watch till the end because I want you to understand very, very important concepts, which are future of literally the world of NLP. Okay. Let's start guys with what is Vertex AI Gen AI Studio. So I will divide this into two parts here. First part, as you can see is Vertex AI and second part is Gen AI Studio. Okay. So what is Vertex AI? Very simple to understand Vertex AI is Google's offering to build, train, manage, deploy machine learning models. Okay. So if you have watched my AWS series, then you know in AWS, there is something known as SageMaker. Uh, something similar to SageMaker, you can think of Vertex AI in the world of Google Cloud. Okay. So what is the job of Vertex AI? It lets you build, train, and deploy let me write here it's very very important concept actually build you know train okay build and train may or may not be same always build train tune deploy manage many other things related to machine learning okay this vertex ai is a you know platform which lets you do all these things fine the second term in above line is Generative AI Studio. So what is Generative AI? Generative AI, if you have some confusions, here is the video from Unfold Data Science Generative AI for Beginners. It has got around 40K views in four months. People are liking this video. Please go ahead and watch this if you don't know anything about Generative AI, okay? So Generative AI is a fancy term, is a new term in the industry, and you must know about this. So what Vertex AI Gen AI Studio, if you combine these two things, right? What Vertex AI Gen Studio, uh, Gen AI Studio does is it gives you a platform. It gives you a platform inside Vertex AI. Okay. Inside Vertex AI, a particular area where you can build your Gen AI application very, very easily. So when I say build your Gen AI applications means you can design your prompt, you can tune your models, you can build from a foundation model, you can, um, you know, build a build a, you can tailor a solution for you. So many things we will see in some time. Okay. But for now, just try to understand an area inside Google, uh, Google's Vertex AI, which lets you build generative AI model with less difficulty or, uh, you know, with uh, easily you can build it. That is about this part. Now let's move to what is the meaning of foundation models in Google Cloud or in general. Okay. So guys, as you know, um, in the world of large language models, right? In the world of large language models, models are trained on very, very high number of parameters, very, very large volume of data and very, very big embeddings. Okay. So what I mean to say here is training large language models is normally a resource intensive process. So let me write it here. All these words you have to use in the interview resource intensive process. Okay. When I say resource intensive process, that means I will need more memory. I will need more processor. I will need more computing power and I will need more money, more cost. Okay. Why? Because I'll be training a very, very deep neural network. And in this deep neural network, if I need to optimize the weights, right? And if it's a very, very deep neural network, right? Then it's going to take a lot of my resources. Hence, the concept of something known as foundation models. What are foundation models? Foundation models are the models. Those are already trained for you. And these are generic in nature. Okay. 
let me give you one example of what is the meaning of a foundation model by taking one simple use case okay suppose there is a use case of sentiment analysis okay sentiment analysis now take an example of three four different industries and try to understand how the sentiment analysis will work so i will write here hollywood okay this is one industry for example i will write here auto sector or car or bikes you can you can think like that this is another sector okay and i will write here politics this is another sector okay now in terms of hollywood right what sentiment i want to understand i want to understand sentiment about let's say a movie i want to uh, understand sentiment about let's say an album i want to understand sentiment about let's say an actor actress okay in the world of auto i want to understand sentiment about a new car that is being launched i want to understand sentiment about um uh, some car which which is taken off from the market right so maybe some cars or bikes which is planned to be taken off from the market or i want to understand the sentiment around maintenance of a car repair of a car around those things right so what i'm trying to say here is um, in the sentiment analysis itself you can in this case you can have a sentiment around a politician you can have a sentiment around a political party you can have a sentiment around election okay so if you see carefully guys all these are one one huge case of sentiment analysis but uh, the way these huge cases will work is very very different right um if i want to understand sentiment of a movie then words like bored or um uh, stretched or lengthy or uh, good action all these words will play an important role on the other hand if i want if i take the auto age industry maybe something like insurance something like damage these are the important ones around politics it can be something like um let's say any any uh, you know uh, day to day terms for example pollution for example um, you can think of anything like um, human rights maybe few few things coming to my mind right so what you have to understand is if i have to train a sentiment analysis model then there will be few things common and some of the things will be specific to my use case okay so the few things common that i spoke about just now right that will be trained by google facebook amazon these big shots and that base model right that base model is called the foundation model so suppose this is a foundation model okay on this foundation model you can have a flavor of either hollywood or you can have a flavor of either auto sector or you can have a flavor of either politics okay but this base model of sentiment analysis is already there so this is the huge case of sentiment analysis foundation model so in google cloud they have given you lot of foundation model which i am going to show you now and without wasting any time let's go ahead and try to see what is generative ai studio and what is model gardens in the world of google cloud okay first of all let's go to something known as vertex ai you can go and search in google vertex ai at the moment you search in google vertex ai you are going to see something like this where it will tell you try vertex ai for free and what it gives you is 300 dollars of free credit to spend don't worry it will ask you for your credit card number but it will not charge you anything until or unless you go and specifically activate your account remember guys if you go and activate your account then it is going to charge you on monthly basis otherwise no okay so don't worry by giving your credit card it is not going to charge you in the first instance itself okay um, you can click on this and once you click then you need you will see something like this here i have and this is a different id i am logged in and this is a different id okay so from this id i am done this now if i click on go to console then something like this will open so here you can see this is vertex ai dashboard and what we are particularly interested in is couple of things here so as i told you in the beginning so here uh, you know model garden is there generative ai studio is there data preparation things model development deploy and use in the beginning i was saying right all the things related to machine learning it will help you with okay 
uh, going to the model gardens first of all i want to show you what is model garden then we will go to generative ai studio so model garden is basically uh, a repository where google has given you lot of foundation models see here pre-trained multitask models that is the reason i gave you i took some time and explained you so that you understand very well what is the meaning of a foundation model okay always keep this example in mind in all these scenarios sentiment analysis will work but it will be the foundation model and the the upper layer flavor will be something different okay so here you can see pre-trained multitask model that can be further tuned or customized for specific tasks so these are your example of foundation models okay you can take these models and you can use it for your purpose for example uh, see here occupancy analysis person vehicle detector i i was talking about sentiment analysis so let me go to sentiment analysis itself so here you can see that google has given you one sentiment analysis base model foundation model suppose i want to use this model okay then how can i use this model i can simply go here and there is some python codes given there is some api callable uh, codes given that i can easily use it okay I can view the API code, use cases are there, then documentation, everything is there. So I'll not go into much detail of this. Just understand this code or this base model, you can use it. Similarly, in model garden, you can see many models here. And here on the left side, you can see the filters, for example, classification, detection, extraction, recognition, blah, blah, blah. You can, you can do all these things yourself. So I'll not waste time here. But one important thing here is you can see Models marked with this star are available in Generative AI Studio. So you can see star in some of the models. For example, Palm 2 for text. You can see the star here, which means this is available in Generative AI Studio, which we will see now. Okay. And then there would be some other models which are available in Generative AI Studio. Having said that, let's directly go to Generative AI Studio. So I will click here. This is the Generative AI Studio. Okay. At the moment, you click on Generative AI Studio. It may ask you to enable the API for Vertex uh, AI. You, you can do it. Uh, it's not like something difficult thing to do. And then what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to do the prompt design for your own large language model. So we will be using a base model and then we will design our prompts. Okay. So let's go to this and let's see our topics. I'm going to, you know, create a flow so that you understand. So what is model gardens? It is basically a repository storing many models which you can use out of these many models. Some of the models are available in JNA studio that we can use for our our own customized uh, generative AI models. OK, so basically few basic things to understand here. What is prompt? OK. What is prompt? So don't go by the fancy name of prompt. Prompt is nothing but a simple text that you write every time you interact with a chatbot or every time you interact with some some um, machine or some device which generates content. OK, for example, when you say to Zomato, where is my food? That is nothing but a prompt. OK, that is nothing but a prompt. OK, so prompt is as simple as this. Now let me go to Gen AI Studio and show you there are three categories of things here. Language, speech and vision. Please pay attention, guys. This is important to understand. And here I have created one project called Aman AI, Gen AI project. You can also create like this. OK, so what I have to do, I will show you all three. But first, let's go to language. Language means something to do with the um, text or, you know, um, prompt design, etc. So let's go here and text prompt and code prompt both are here or I can also create a conversation that I'm going to show you in some time. First, let's go to the text prompt. OK. In the world of prompt design, right, what I'm going to do now is. I'm going to design prompt for my own model. Understand this, guys, I will be using a base model here. This will be my base model. OK, I have an option of using this base model as it is or I have an option of putting a layer of my own knowledge on top of this and then using this. OK, I'm going to show you both. Let's use the base model here. For example, 
I will say, for example, I will say how to feed child easily. Just, you know, normal uh, one prompt I'm giving. I'm submitting, as you can see, I have submitted here and response is getting generated, okay? So here, a response is coming, remove the markdown and you can see here, make meal time a positive experience, offer a variety of foods, don't force your child to eat, set a good example, be patient, some, some knowledge on how to feed child. What I did just now is called, let me see the terminology, otherwise I may say something which is not there. This is called zero short prompt, okay? What I did now is called a zero short prompt. Why zero short? Because I am not giving any examples, okay? Zero short prompt. Now, this was the basic, basic uh, uh, foundation model that was being used here. If you want to see which model is being used, then you can pay attention here, guys. Test text bizon latest. This is the model that we are using now. Okay. What I want to do now is I want to uh, I want to this is this is free from text free form text. Okay. Now I want to supply some structured text. This is a free uh, form text. I want to supply some structured text here. So let's go here in the structured text. Here, what we can do is we can give a context. We can give a context. So what is context? Context is basically my own flavor on top of existing model. So I have few things here. Let me go here and take the context, okay? So this is my Unfold Data Science uh, channel introduction. Let me go here and give the context, okay? So this is the context. This channel is to help people. In place of this channel, I will say Unfold Data Science actually. Unfold Data Science channel is to help understand uh, basics of data science machine learning. So this is the context I am setting before designing my prompt. Now what I will do is I showed you one example of zero prompt where we are not giving any examples, right? It's just directly we are asking questions. Here, I am giving some examples. For, for example, I will say here, uh, where to learn data science easily, okay? And in the answer, I will say unfold data science. This is one question response set that I'm giving to my model to learn, okay? Then I will say here, how can I learn data science? Okay, and here I will say through unfold data science channel. What I have done here, guys, pay attention. I have set a context and I have given two examples. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to use the foundation model, which is here text be shown, and I want to give it my own flavor. Now, as I have given two things, now I can ask it. This is my prompt, which I'm writing here. So I'm testing my model, how my model is performing. Okay. So I will say, uh, please tell me how to learn data science. Okay. I'm testing. Let's see what is the response generated. See here, this is the response. You can learn data science through the unfold data science channel. This is the response generated from the model. Now, suppose I'm happy. So context can be very, very large and the examples also can be as many as you want. But for example, suppose I'm happy with this. For example, suppose I'm happy with this, my prompt design. So what I did now, I just designed my, you know, prompt. I just say that, okay, these are my examples. This is my context. So my model understands that, okay, these kind of prompts will come, these kind of response I'll give. What I can do next is, I can simply click on this view code, okay? In this view code, you will see multiple options. So one option is Vertex CI SDK for Python, other option is Python Colab. What I want to show you here is, you can directly use this in your Colab, okay? So let me go to Colab. I think I should be having one notebook already. 
okay i need to this is my different id okay so first llm prompt design is the one i was talking about before creating this video i did some experimentation so that was one okay so what you can see here is i will be copying code from here only let me close this it's confusing this is also confusing so you can copy this you can copy this both the things and you can paste in your uh, collab okay so some packages are getting installed now this part is important here guys so see here i am using a pre-trained model see here this part is important text generation model dot from pre-trained text be shown okay and this is my context that i'm giving here and these are my examples input output input output now i'm asking the question where to learn data science and it is giving me answer okay so it is running and it is giving me answer unfold data science channel now i will go here and say something about data science is data science difficult to learn let's see what it says no it's easy to learn okay so what i did just now is now don't bother about little bit question and examples here and there because uh, this is I was experimenting some time back and uh, you know, this is what I'm showing you now. So that's fine. Same way you can copy and run it there. What I have done now is I have designed my prompt. Now if I want to save this right, I will click on save, give prompt a name and then save. It takes a lot of time to save the prompt. Hence, I'm not saving. But if you save it, it will show in your Gen AI studio. This is one part of the story. Okay. This is one part of the story guys. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you continue. I'm going to show you what other things can happen in generative AI studio. So I can go here and I can create a chat prompt. Chat prompt means I can design a chat bot of my own. Okay. So let me set some context here first. I will go here and I will set a context. Let me show you what this context is. I am running a business for online courses. Whenever any user interacts through the chatbot, then give a WhatsApp number this and ask to contact me on WhatsApp directly. This is the context I'm setting. Now I will say, hey, Aman, this is a question I'm asking and I will say enter. Let's see what model responds here. Hey there, how can I help today? Please contact me on WhatsApp. Okay, so I have given some context and I'm able to get the answer like the way I want. Remember, you can set your context however you want. Here I have given a very small context. Okay. Same way examples you can give. Same way if you click on view code, it will give you the code for collab or Python, whatever you want. And you can use this code in your collab or Python. Curl also is there, but um, I think most of you will be using Python collab or Python. So I'm showing you those things. So whatever you saw now is related to text part of Gen AI, okay? Or the language part of Gen AI. Okay, continue. I don't want to save it. There is one more thing in this, something known as import prompt. So what you can do is you can import, import if you have prompt saved somewhere, which is a good quality prompt, you can import it from here, okay? Let's see some more things that can happen inside Gen AI Studio. As I told you, there are three major parts of this language, speech and vision. Okay. So if I go to vision, right, what I can do is I can upload an image and then I will say generate caption. So what it does is it is basically vision means something to do with images and videos, right? I'm not sure if videos input is taken as of now, but let's see what it does in generating the caption okay and i'm going to show you see here a man leans against a brick wall in front of a building with a statue on it okay so that is what exactly i'm doing here and that is what it is showing me okay now i can ask questions also okay so from here who is in the photo okay and I will say generate. So 
by looking at the picture, it will generate information. So here you can see generating answers. This is the magic of Gen AI guys. In Gen AI machine learning or the system generates new things for you. Okay. So who is in the picture? It says men. Okay. And then there are other things which you can explore. I'm not going to go into details of that in the vision section. Okay. So it can give caption, edit, in edit, right? Many things are there. I was just experimenting. Many things are there. Going back to the speech, right? The third part of generative AI. You can do two things here as of not text to speech and speech to text. Okay. From the name only, it's clear. So let me write it here. Hello. This is Aman from Unfold Data Science. Okay. And then I will say, I will generate in female voice. Okay. Submit. Okay. I'm able to hear that. What I can do in the same way, I can go here. I can take code in curl, Python, or console. I can take and use it. Okay. So these are the three major, major. This also you can play around with this. Okay, you can import a audio file and you can see how it is generating the content. Now, uh, there are three main, main things of Generative AI Studio, language, vision, and speech. You can play around with this. Let me see my topic list again. So, zero sort prompt was something where there is no examples given. In some of the things, we, we gave some examples, right? Those are called one short prompt and structured prompt, right? So, multiple names are there, okay? One short prompt, few short prompts. Those are the name. So let's go here and try to see designing prompts. We saw in collab, we saw example features of generative AI speech to text and vision. Also, we saw what is the way forward. So um, we learned about Vertex AI generative AI studio, which is one of the core things, core offering of Google. But there are many things hidden inside it. If you go to model design, right? Then model garden, then you can see that models can be used in n number of different ways. Okay. And it's very important if you want to, if you want to increase the weight of your resume, or if you want to, if you're looking for a job and you want to have something different in your resume, right? Then it becomes very important to play around with these pre-trained models and see what all can be done. Okay. These, these become very, very, uh, what to say, very, very specific and niche topics. Not many people may be interested in these topics, but if many people are interested, maybe I can take one of these models from model garden and walk you through how to do a kind of mini project and put that in your resume. Okay. So please give me a thumbs up guys, if you like this content and I'll see you all in the next video, wherever you are, stay safe and take care.